Good morning, 7.1, 7.4, 7.5 and 7.6. So we are about to embark on a um, another few days of home learning. While we do this, um, we will be giving you a lesson each day for those of you that would be having a normal English lesson on that day of the week. So 7.1, 7.4, 7.5 and 7.6. You would have all had an English lesson today. Uh, not with me, my name's Mrs Sheehan, but with your English teachers. But um, I will be quickly talking you through your lesson that you would have had today. So can you take your books if you have them, your exercise books? If not, can you please take your um, Word document or your piece of paper, whichever you're working on? Can you put today's date in the top right hand corner and underline it? Underline it rather. Then your title is Myths and Legends. Once you've done that, I'd like you to do a quick do now task. So if you are using your exercise books, um, I like my students to do do now, now tasks in the back of your book. Um, so if you could turn to the back of your books, if not, just do it at the top of the page you're working on. And we're going to have a quick recap of myths and legends and what we've learned so far. So it's a really simple fill in the blanks task. This should take you about five minutes. So I would like you to choose the correct word from this word bank at the bottom of the slide and add it in to the three small sentences that we have here. So the first one reads, a something is a something story that is based on something that may have actually happened. So you would then choose um, a, a word from this word bank and pop it into the relevant slot that you feel is appropriate. So once you've spent about five minutes on that, it might not take you that long. I would like you to um, have a think about um, the purpose of, of that myths have. So um, there are three main sorts of myths that we that we find. Uh, the first one might be something called an etiological myth, which explains the reasons why something is the way it is today. For example, we have the myth of per uh, Persephone and the pomegranate, which helps us to understand the hot and cold seasons of the year. Um, we also have historical myths, and they're told about an actual event that happened, um, and they help keep the event alive and in our memory. For example, the Trojan War, where there was the wooden horse. Um, and then we have a psychological myth. Now, they try to explain why we feel the way that we do. So they're to do with emotions, um, and they're seen as a divine force, and that they come from the outside, or the gods, and they affect how we feel and behave. So... It tells us that basically the gods are in charge of how we feel, how we behave and how we think. So your first task is in this green box. Now you'll see if there's ever a video made by myself or a PowerPoint um, I've worked on, I will always put your tasks in a green box just so they're really clear for you to work through. So your do now is in a green box and this one is here, so task one. Um, I'd like you to summarise these types of myths, so etiological, historical and psychological, in your own words, or you could choose to draw pictures. Um, do this using three bullet points as I have here, or you could do three separate pictures. Um, try not to just copy the way that these are written because there's some elements that you might not understand. If you're still a bit unclear about what these things are, use Google. Um, there'll be lots of information on them so three bullet points no more than a couple of sentences per bullet point summarizing an etiological myth a historical myth and a psychological myth i expect that should take you about 10 to 15 minutes <clears throat> now once you've completed your summaries um, we'd like you to start planning your own myth so this might take a bit of thinking time but to get it down on paper shouldn't take too long so you'll need to now independently plan uh, an idea for a myth um, and create a mind map similar to the one that you see below to help you. Now, it says independently plan, but that's because this lesson would have originally been in less in physically in a classroom. Now, I'm aware you're all at home, therefore, probably I'm working quite independently. But if you have a grown up at home with you or um, an older sibling or a younger sibling <laughs> that you could sort of ask for inspiration and ideas, please do so. I mean, you haven't done a lot of work on this topic, so you may struggle to come up with an idea yourself. Um, <clears throat> but I'd like you to plan your own myth, basically. Create a mind map similar to the one that we have below here. 
Um, so your success criteria, so what a good plan will look like, is that you will have chosen either an aetiological, historical or psychological myth. So the three sorts of myths that we looked at in the previous slide that you should have now summarised. That you remember the purpose of each type of myth, so make sure that the uh, story that you're telling in your myth matches your uh, the type of myth that you've chosen. And consider appropriate characters, events, locations that will suit that type of myth that you've chosen. So, um, you can see here that the uh, myth is, is a um, etiological myth, so the reason that something is the way it is. And in this bubble we have the reason that it snows. <clears throat> So uh, we've put round the side that it was when Orpheus lost his wife Eurydice in the underworld and he was very upset. He then searched far and wide and even the peaks of the highest mountains. However, it was cold at the peak of the Mount Olympus and that Orpheus's tears were frozen. But they weren't completely frozen because the love he felt for Eurydice made, his, made him tender. So warm feelings, which meant that they were only snowflakes. So um, not completely frozen like a hail storm. Um, <clears throat> so in this plan, we have the character Orpheus and his wife. We have the setting of the underworld and the feelings that he had. He was upset. Um, he the, What he was doing was he was searching for his wife because he couldn't find her and he was in the mountains. We know in high mountains, it can be very, very cold and snow. Therefore, his tears froze but not complete because of the warmth in his heart. Um, so that there was only snowflakes. So we've chosen an appropriate setting, the high mountain peaks, as our moral message is the reason that it snows. And we know in high mountain peaks, we get snow. You could have chosen something like uh, the North Pole. He might have gone there. Maybe you could think of some other places that may, it might have snowed. And that's another variation of this um, aetiological myth that you could have gone for. But we do want you to come up with your own reason for your myth. So, um, one I've thought of is it could be why is the grass green? So if we were going to do that myth, we would want to choose uh, two characters or one character, usually two because you want there to be a message and a story. Some of the settings I might choose for that would be, um, well it certainly wouldn't be a dry place like Africa or a desert or the middle of Australia where it's very arid and barren. I would probably want to choose somewhere like the fields of England. We know that uh, lots of England is associated with being very green. I might choose some of the big plains that you find in places like Russia and China. Um, <clears throat> uh, it could be that you choose somewhere like South Africa. So we know that mid to North Africa is much warmer, therefore much kind of uh, more arid and desert. Um, environments whereas South Africa is a lot more luscious and green so it could be that what the message or the story in your myth happens in South Africa and originally let's say South Africa was arid and dry as North and Mid Africa is now and an event happens with your mythological creature that um, means that they turn the grass green there maybe so the animals can thrive and they have something to eat or um, the people that live in that area then can grow their crops um, because there's enough lusciousness for the grass to be green and the crops to grow. Hopefully that made sense. I'm not sure that made sense to me as I said it, but maybe listen to that bit again if you're not sure. Anyway, you're going to come up with your own, uh, your own myth. So don't necessarily choose why does it snow or why is the grass is green. You should have already created a chimera, so your own um, mythological creature. <clears throat> if you haven't done that, which I think all of you will have done, uh, have a quick think and create one of your own. Make sure that you have got uh, a chosen animal head, um, a different animal's body, and then additional features that that animal will have. So if you've already done that, use the chimera that you've created. If not, create one now. <clears throat> This task will probably take uh, another 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so as well as describing what it looks like, you'll need to give some special powers. So task number three is choose one or two superpowers that the creature has. For instance, it could breathe fire or shapeshift into different creatures or even people.
And then is there anything else special or unique about your Chimera? Make some additional notes. So just really get a nice feel for what uh, creature you will be using in your story. And then finally, the main bit of this lesson is to see if you can use your own mythological beast into your story. So task four is to write a short story. I don't want any more than one side of A4. Um, I would say aim for half a side to one side. That's enough for you to be able to include a start, middle and ending. And make sure that it includes your mythological beast. The success criteria for this is ensure that you stick to your chosen aetiological, historical or psychological myth. Remember the person of, purpose sorry, of your chosen myth. For instance, as I said before, why the grass is green. That could be the message that you're, um, you're delivering if it was an aetiological myth. And make sure you use appropriate characters, events, locations to suit the type of myth that you've chosen. So uh, the example I gave of why the grass is green, uh, the characters I referenced were, were animals, were maybe people that needed to grow crops. Um, the event might be that um, people or animals were starving and your creature felt um, compassion or maybe anger at somebody because they hadn't allowed uh, this part of the world to be luscious and green for these people to, people or animals to, to eat and survive. And the location I chose was um, South Africa. Um, because I know that's a luscious area of the world. However, some parts of Africa are dry, so it could have been that South Africa used to be a dry, arid landscape, and then your mythological creature, your chimera, made it luscious, as we know it today. Lots to think about, but I'm sure you can all do this. This bit of the lesson will probably take you 20 minutes to half an hour to do well. So this is due in by the end of today, as it would be if you were in a lesson. Um, today is Wednesday the 9th of September. If each task takes you a little longer than I've stated, please don't worry. We're not actually sat in lessons today, so one benefit to that is that if you need to overrun slightly, you can. But do remember, you will have lessons from your um, other subjects that you would have had today, and they'll be also expecting you to get your work done by the end of the day. So if you get to a certain point and you really feel that you can't complete it all and you've say spent an hour, hour and a half, just finish where you are and we'd like you to send the work in um, that you do today to your normal English teacher. So don't send it to me, Mrs Sheehan, because I don't work Wednesdays so it wouldn't be me that is teaching any of you, but send it to your normal English teacher. Uh, I wish you the best of luck. If you do have any questions, please email your teachers. Um, you can contact me. Um, but as I said, it's not actually official working day for me, so I may not be completely available. Um, yeah, so I wish you the best of luck and take care. Goodbye.